thank you for joining me today. Um, my name is Judith Mendoza. I will be continuing today with the life of Jesus. And I am an ordained minister. I am a Bible teacher from what the Bible says. And I am also one of Jehovah's Witnesses. So today I will continue with um, the next thing that happens in Jesus' life. If you have your Bible, uh, please use your Bible and see what it says. Because it is God's word for us. was able to uh, connect to Twitter to do my uh, my presentation today. Today I will be reading from the book of Matthew from the Gospels or the Good News and then also from Luke and Mark. I will go to the book of Mark first. I had uh, totally forgotten how to connect um, Twitter. I forgot that I have to go to the compose a tweet or a section where one tweet and then from there, the picture that takes you to the camera to take you to the camera so that you can choose light from there. So today um, is Mark chapter 1. And I have to still find the where the names come from, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, meaning the origin of these names. I, I have to, I have kept that on my mind. I still have to look for that information. It is good to know. Mark chapter 1 verses 40 through 45 and so that says and if you have your Bible it is good that you look this information with your Bible in 40 from Mark chapter 1 it says there also came to him a leper pleading with him even on bended knee saying to him, if you just want to, you can make me clean. At that, he, Jesus, was moved with pity, and he stretched out his hand and touched him, and said to him, I want to be made clean. Immediately the leprosy vanished from him. From the man that had leprosy and he became clean then he gave him strict orders and at once he sent him away saying to him see that you say nothing to anyone but go show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing the things Moses directed for a witness to them but after going away, the men started 
to proclaim to proclaim it a great deal and to spread the account widely so that Jesus was no longer able to enter openly into a city but he stayed outside in isolated places yet they kept coming to him from all sides so that is what Mark tells us in regards to um, he continued Jesus continued doing these miracles and he compassionately made these men uh, he cured them he cured the man he cleansed him from that horrible sickness let's see what Matthew says Matthew and that is uh, on chapter 8 so if you go to chapter 8 of the book of Matthew and from there I will be reading 1 through 4 there it says after he came down from the mountain a large crowd followed him followed Jesus and look a leopard came up and did obeisance to him saying Lord if you just want to you can make me clean so stretching out his hand, he touched him, saying, I want to be made clean. Immediately, his leprosy was cleansed away. Then Jesus said to him, See that you tell no one, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses appointed for a witness to them. And so, that is the account according to Matthew. We see when comparing that Mark give us more, a little bit more information in regards to what happened after the man got cleansed and was sent to uh, the temple. And then it give us also the explanation in regards to um, Jesus and that he wasn't able to actually go openly to places because people were basically most likely waiting for, for him so that um, they can have miracles performed for them. The next account is uh, by Luke, and that is in chapter 5 of the book of Luke. And from the book of Luke, chapter 5, uh, the account is on verses 12 through 16. So 5, 12, begins on 12 through 16 from Luke account he says on another occasion while he was in one of the cities look there was a man full of leprosy when he caught sight of Jesus he fell face down and begged him Lord if you just want to you can make me clean so stretching out his hand he touched him saying I want to be made clean. Immediately the leprosy vanished from him. Then he gave the man orders to tell no one. But go on and show yourself to the priest and make an offering for your cleansing. Just as Moses directed for a witness to them. But the news about him just kept spreading and large crowds will gather together to listen and to be cured of their sicknesses. However, he often went into desolate areas to pray. 
in here it gives us a different viewpoint of it if you notice from what mark says and what luke says they both give us a little bit of more information in regards to what the leper or the man who that had been cured from this leprosy did after he was cured in this account over here um, it tells us that the news about him just kept spreading and these are some things um, that we cannot stop we cannot stop like for example uh, it, it is telling us over here that this man first of all what is to know is that the man went and he was before Jesus well the thing about this is that this man was actually violating the law and most likely that is why he was sent to the temple to the priest to be cleansed of the sin that he had committed because in those days those who had leprosy they were to be treated in a way because well uh, leprosy is uh, something that can be transmitted to some, some other human so the just as how a virus in a situation of a virus as we have had the pandemic and we still have the pandemic of a coronavirus 19 people had to be kept in isolation because and whenever they come out to the city they had to yell out to the people unclean unclean and no one could touch the person actually that was uh, something that the person had to do in order for that person for that person to to or the people around this person who had leprosy to move about, to move from the men. So let's find out what is leprosy. Because uh, we need to know. One thing to know is that leprosy is now known as Hansen's disease is an infection caused by slow growing bacteria called mycobacterium. It's an infection caused by slow growing bacteria called mycobacterium leprae. It can affect the nerves, skin, eyes, and lining of the nose. Or the nasal mucosa with early diagnosis and treatment the disease can be cured and um, does leprosy exist today is that that is a question uh, leprosy is no longer something to fear today the disease is rare it's also treatable and most people lead a normal life during and after treatment So how does the leprosy start in the body of the person? The bacterium myco, mycobacterium leprae causes leprosy. It's thought that leprosy spreads through contact with the mucosal secretions of a person with the infection. This usually occurs when a person with leprosy sneezes or coughs. The disease isn't highly contagious. So, what does leprosy look like? 
Signs of leprosy are painless ulcers, skin lesions of hypopigmented macules or flat pale areas of skin and eye damage, dryness, reduced blinking, later large ulcerations, loss of digits, skin nodules, and facial disfigurement may develop. The infection spreads from person to person by nasal, nasal secretion or droplets. And we know that the, uh, the disease now of leprosy is known as Hansen's disease. And it is basically caused by an infection caused by slow growing bacteria called Mycobacterium leprae. So that was the condition. That was the condition that was uh, found with this person. According to the law, the person found in, in, and you can go into different chapters that were given in the Leviticus and um, in the books that Moses wrote, how, to, how they could identify different uh, diseases that existed and those that were treated as transmittable. So we know that the Hebrews were guided by God the only thing is that they had to obey in order for themselves to maintain uh, their life and or um, for them to extend their life by means of not getting sick and die from these diseases that existed. And we know that this disease, this particular disease uh, was and as we know now also is and was transmittable so the persons had to seclude themselves had to go away from all others and they will be kept in isolation until the disease is cured and if it, they didn't find a cure obviously um, in those days they didn't find the cure so what they did is that they had to keep the persons that had this different disease that could, de could be harmful to others they kept the people in isolation they had to um, also according to the law that God had given them because uh, these, the Hebrews were people, uh, were the nation of God, Jehovah God. They had these uh, requirements. They didn't know why, uh, but um, they knew that this was leper, had these uh, grievous conditions. Lepers had grievous conditions and by law, they had to protect others' lives as well as theirs also. But we know what has been mentioned over here that it does to, to the person, to the skin, to the nerves. It says over here that uh, it can affect the nerves, the skin, the eyes, the lining of the nose, and uh, basically the, the, the skin has um, uh, this different type of conditions. Uh, there are ulcers, lesions, damage to the eyes. They are also rations, uh, loss of digits for their fingers, skin nodules and facial discomfort because their, their skin falls off. So we want to 
why I am explaining all this is because we want to think about the situation that was going on at this time. We also want to make note that the Hebrews were advanced in knowledge of these diseases and how it affected them. And they knew this because God will give them the instructions to know and to find the diagnosis for these different diseases. If you go into the Bible, you will find how they were guided. The priests were guided and they could analyze each situation and come up with the conclusion if this was uh, a type of leprosy and the person had to be kept isolated from others or if it was something else that needed to be treated in a different way. So it was God guiding them. That is very important to, to, to know because we may think and we may accredit humans only with knowledge. And, and the Bible, of course, is not a book of medicine. It's not a book of science. But it tells us to guide us because God wants the best for us humans. Of course, we are in the situation where God has allowed time for humans to basically we use we are using our free will Adam and Eve decided that they were going to side with Satan and that was before we were born and so we are under this situation where Adam and Eve decided that and we have the choice because we have no fault in whatever they did, but we are still born as sinners, as enemy, enemies from God, and also uh, disobeying God does cause death. Death for Adam and Eve and death for their children, which includes us today but we have the choice and we can choose to side with God we know that those two different organizations have been developed that we can observe and distinguish from both of them and that is from the prophecy that was told in Genesis 3:15. so there is the condition over here with these men and if you notice he's outside he's in front of everyone and he tells Jesus if you want to you can make me clean he had faith that Jesus could cure him and basically Jesus had been doing miracles had been curing people and have been um, doing the, all different types of miracles with the power of Jehovah God. Now, besides that this man has most likely lived in isolation, and we can understand what that is, living in isolation by himself out there with other leopards, and he had most likely not touched anyone in a long time. We humans are social creatures. We yearn from this type of uh, social actions. Maybe having someone hug you, someone that can put their arm on on you or give you the hand give you a hand these are things that are um, innate in us we are born with this desire and actually uh, 
we know that uh, those who study uh, the body, the human body, they have found that just by having the touch of a person, we can feel better. And, and not only that, but uh, for example, when parents have their children close to them, they hug their children, it's a type of reassurance. You are reassuring your child that that child has is loved, protected, wanted, cared for, and basically we, we all um, yearn that. So these men have been in isolation for some time. Besides that, whenever he moves through the crowds, because maybe he has to go somewhere, he has to call out, according to Leviticus chapter 13, 45 and 46, he has to say, unclean, unclean. Do you imagine? Do you imagine how, how painful it could have been for people who were leopards at that time? Um, they were disfigured. The disease had disfigured them. And of course, these diseases and death is something abnormal that that God does not want it to happen but it is happening because Adam and Eve sin against Jehovah God and he said that when you eat from this fruit that I have forbidden you to eat from you will positively die and basically that is what happens to us we are dying but soon all of that will be done away with and through the kingdom that is why it's called the good news of God's kingdom because through that kingdom that Jesus inherits from David he will be able to do many great things that governments today cannot do even the best governments today on earth who are trying to do what is good for others and who are governing in a way that if it is approved according to Romans chapter 13 even then right um, there are limitations because for example Jesus can cure the sick can do away with death and also can resurrect our loved ones so Yes, um, we all are waiting for that government to take over and for us to subject under that government, all of us who want to do what is good, who are yearning for, um, for these things to happen, to, to be come truth. Now, of course, He's out there, and he gets real close to Jesus. He gets real close to Jesus, and, and if you look over here, and it begins on 12, on 13. On 12, the man begs Jesus to cure him. On 13, Jesus, stretching his hand, he touched him. He touched, Jesus touched the man, saying, I want to be made clean. Jesus touched the man. Jesus did not tell the man, what are you doing? You are breaking the law. How can you approach me? How can you put all of these people in danger, including I, with your leprosy? Stay away at a distance. I can cure you from a distance. Jesus did not say that. Jesus 
at no time, and the apostles, he, also, they were there, but of course, Jesus was taking the lead among them. Jesus did not reproach or reprove the men. Jesus stretched out his hand towards the man who was most likely kneeling in front of Jesus and said, I want to, I want to clean you from this disease. I want you to be clean from it. I want you to cure from this disease. And it says that the leprosy, which we know according to what um, it has been found out, it was a horrible disease. It disfigured the person. And it says that it vanished. And he told him, be made clean. And immediately the leprosy vanished from the men. And so what do we want to imitate from, from Jesus? Of course, uh, diseases that are contagious are to be treated with uh, very much care. Care for the person who cares for that one who has um, a contagious disease because that person does not want to be exposed and also get the disease while treating, treating the person. Of course, that have, be, have to be taken into account. And Jesus did took that into account because he told the man that to go and to give this, um, let me just read it from here. Uh, on 14 he says, then he, Jesus gave the man orders to tell no one but go and show yourself to the priest and make an offering for your cleansing as Moses directed for a witness to them. So that was something that was supposed to be done upon the person uh, becoming clean from this leprosy. The man was in a pitiful condition and that is what Jesus looked. That is what Jesus concerned himself about. Of course, uh, we're not Jesus. Uh, Jesus could touch the man and cure the man. And we're not Jesus. We are to handle um, infirmities that are contagious with the, the guidance that exists for treating and dealing with uh, this type of diseases nowadays. But we can learn. We can learn from the compassion that Jesus had for this human being. The man was a human being. A human being, just like any one of us who have feelings, emotions and uh, who have been created with the need to be with others because we are social humans and so we need the company of others and so Jesus took that into consideration so compassion showing compassion for others being kind to others that is something that we can learn from what Jesus did or the way that he treated these men. Of course, as I mentioned again, Jesus could cure this man and so therefore he could touch the man and he decided to do so. We are not Jesus. So we should take care to follow the guidance that we receive from um, doctors from the, uh, those who practice medicine and for us to inform ourselves of 
with the information that is provided, that is there, that is available in regards to uh, different uh, diseases and how they affect us. And so, what is, what is compassion? And I will look it up so we can get uh, the correct definition. And so we know that Jesus had compassion for people, not only uh, when he was curing the people, but also when Jesus taught in the way that he uh, teach others, especially when it came to, and that was his main concern, preaching and teaching about the good news of God's kingdom. He acknowledged that the kingdom message uh, will not always be welcome also, but and we also know, as we have experienced, that, um, that we may encounter in our preaching time some who speak abusively, who are maybe violent, And we know that even even a whole country can be like, like that. A whole government can be like that. And, and that is not only on Russia, but besides Russia, there are other countries who can be that way uh, for those who preach and teach from what the Bible says in the manner uh, that Jesus did. But a compassionate person sees the needs and problems of others, feels sympathy for them, for those uh, persons, and want to help. However, if we begin to lose our compassion for those whom we need, then we may also begin to lose the spirit of wanting to become or become imitators of God and showing love to others, genuine love to others. And basically that's what has happened. That's what makes the love cool off. Because we see a lot of that. And so we may think, well, you know, that person is not deserving. But this quality of compassion is also one of long suffering. And when we imitate Jehovah's compassion, we keep in mind what scripture? Well, we keep in mind that scripture that says in John 3.16, And I will read it so that we can remind ourselves. John 3.16 says, For God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone exercising faith in him might not be destroyed, but have everlasting life. And so for thousands of years, putting ourselves in God's situation, because he had feelings too, he had emotions too, we imitate him because we can imitate him because he has these emotions too, his feelings. 
For thousands of years, Jehovah has endured the reproach that has been brought on his name. Have you ever had that? Had reproach on your name? Someone said something about you that wasn't true? And then spread out? Blaming you for things that you didn't do? Yet, Jehovah, God, remains kind toward the unthankful and wicked. And his kindness is demonstrated by his patience. God does not want anyone to be destroyed, but want all of us to reach repentance. According to 1 Timothy 2, 3 and 4, and you can look it up on your Bible, with your Bible, 2 Timothy, 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy 2, 3 and 4 says, This is fine and acceptable in the sight of our Savior God, whose will is that all sorts of people should be saved and come to an accurate knowledge of truth. God does not desire to destroy anyone. He does not want to. But He also is sovereign Lord over humans. He is a creator. The created thing is not bigger or higher than the creator. Jehovah God deserves our worship. Now, although God hates wickedness, he views humans as precious and does not want any one of us to lose our lives. Jehovah understands how effectively Satan has blinded unbelieving humans. And that is what Second Corinthians three, Second Corinthians four, three and four says, in fact, the good news we declare is veiled. It is veiled among those who are perishing, among those whom the God of this system of things has blinded the minds of the unbelievers, so that the illumination of the glorious good news about Christ who is the image of God might not shine through. And Satan uses, use, has been using different methods to keep this truth from what Jehovah's uh, from the Bible, from what Jehovah's word, God's word is. Satan does not want us to know this. And so the preaching and teaching activity is a problem for Satan. It's a huge problem. Because if you know the truth, the accurate truth that is based on what the Bible says, then you may become a follower of the Christ and lead Satan's world, the world that he has created. Now, if you consider Jehovah's view of the ancient Ninevites, they were violent people. The Ninevites, history tells us that they were violent people, but also the Bible record tells us that they were violent people. Jehovah said to Jonah, should I not also feel sorry for Nineveh, the great city in which there are more than 120,000 men who do not even know right from wrong? Jehovah viewed the Ninevites as spiritual disadvantage and he mercifully commissioned Jonah to warn them. They didn't know. They didn't know what God required from them. 
but Jonah was sent to them. Then the account tells us that at that time the Ninevites actually turn around, they changed their ways, cha they changed their actions and stopped being violent and stopped doing all the other things that he mentions that they were doing bad and that were against what Jehovah God requires. So like his father, Jesus was moved with pity at seeing this man's condition. Just like many, many in uh, those who are doctors and nurses who work long hours to treat others, just like doctors and nurses who spend themselves long hours helping others by giving them care, medical care, following the guidance that is needed in relation to whatever situation that one may, uh, may go through. So we know that um, there are certain, certain uh, places of work and work situations that require that uh, this compassion and long suffering. And so we imitate this. We want to imitate this. We want to imitate those who are compassionate and those who are um, showing this type of compassion. And especially when it comes to uh, feeling compassion as it was with the Ninevites, that they didn't know right from wrong because no one had told them. And so when they did, when they were warned by Jonah, they listened and they turned around. They changed their actions and they asked for forgiveness from Jehovah God, whom uh, they were forgiven by Jehovah God because they obeyed, they became obedient to God's word through Jonah, which we do have that in that story, that account, that Bible record, we have it in the Bible. And if you would like to know a little bit more about that um, event that happened or the time in, in Noah's, in um, Jonah's time, you can find that on their videos at jw.org. It is a very, very uh, good movie to watch with your family. And there are others also, but we do have that one for Jonah. Okay, so that was uh, today's lesson in regards to um, the life and ministry of Jesus. And so we are learning a little bit more about him the more that we know about Jesus, the more that we know about Jehovah God. And um, we want to become imitators of God. And we do that by following Jesus Christ. Because no other human has imitated Jehovah other than Jesus. He imitated him perfectly. So we want to follow his example. Uh, the next time we will be considering another another man who becomes who becomes cured by Jesus and we have to keep in mind that these are the things also that will happen in the future after Armageddon these are the things that that Jesus will undo Part of the things that Jesus will undo in regards to Satan works. He will, Jesus will undo the works of the devil, which basically um, have to do with sinning, have to do with death, have to do with sickness and illnesses. That we know Satan is also capable of creating for us humans. And so, Jesus will undo all of these things and we have learned
that how it will be because we are seeing, we are learning from what the Bible tells us, the Bible record. Okay, so thank you for joining me today and I will be, tomorrow I will be considering the, uh, continuing the book of Apocalypse. Okay, have a great night. Bye-bye.